To remain updated with the latest business news, click on the bell icon. The National Statistical Organization's Periodic Labor Force for FI20 uh, released in July 2021 showed a rise in the share of labor force in agriculture despite policy objectives of moving them out of agriculture. This is for 2021. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real wages in rural areas have turned negative across all agriculture and non-agriculture operations so far in FI22. The question asked in the report, and I'm paraphrasing it, is it not perplexing, particularly when a disturbing trend and distress is building up in rural India, that some of the spending seems to have been tightened? So, I think the, the years on which this report appears, I have not seen the report. Okay. But I'm sure you're reading it correctly. I'm mm. not disputing that. Mm. But I would say that the years you're referring to are the years when the whole world has been subject to distress. India has not been an exception. So, to choose 2021 and 2122 and say that there is distress, I admit that. I am unhappy about it. But it is not something that governments in any country have been able to prevent. It's a difference of degree between one polity and another. So on the larger question of what is to be done in agriculture, the government remains committed to improving the incomes of farmers. The MSP program remains very strong. It's fully funded. Record levels of grain procurement are being done. And the MSP is being extended beyond the narrow range of two or three North Indian states. Recently, like just this morning, I had somebody from Assam telling me that for the first time, MSP procurement has been very successfully done in Assam. Now, this is the way the government is moving and there are adequate monies provided to back all the farmer programs. The PM Kisan program has finally reached some states where the state had decided not to use it earlier. So that is being done and the agriculture budget is up. Now, there is a portion of the distress particularly 2021, is affected by the migration that happened. It is affected by the peculiar circumstances of that year. I wouldn't draw a trend based on that, nor would I minimize the issue of improving agricultural income. It is a long-term uh, thing and we are working on it and we will. We are very committed to improving agricultural income. One quick uh, yeah. final comment about uh, this whole broader debate about the haves becoming better off and those who are at the bottom end suffering and this bit about uh, the inequality. Uh, do you agree with that, particularly in the context of uh, uh, rural stress? I have not seen very credible data on this. I am not disputing it. But I would say that this is more anecdotal and perception. I, it is absolutely true that people who invest in stock markets have done very well and that they are mostly the rich. So I think that is absolutely true. Perhaps there is a case for, you know, you know, for them to pay more taxes. But the government has chosen to stick with its uh, stable tax policy. But in terms of is, is it worsening, I have not yet seen very clear data that would prove it one way or the other. But we remain very conscious of the need to protect the poor. And protecting the poor is something that the government has paid a lot of attention to throughout the pandemic, both you, in terms you, of food support, the stock income support. Sorry? No, no, you spared the stock markets but gave the stick to crypto investors. Ah, yes. I think uh, crypto investments have, are going to be taxed. Yes, that's right. Uh, but Dr. Somnathan, I, I know I'm stretching this, but I'll try and keep this as the very last question. The doors have been kept open. The windows have been kept open. There is no boundary wall surrounding this garden. Uh, Forty odd uh, platforms are providing crypto services. People have entered it in the absence of a regulatory regime. The government has not yet framed a law. The common man is not responsible for that. They elect lawmakers. Yet a punitive kind of taxation is done. It is treated like gambling. Is it fair to do it in this manner? Why not a law first regulation and then a stable regulatory taxation regime, sir? No, I think the Income Tax Act doesn't exempt any kind of income except agricultural income. Income from crypto has been taxable even before this law. It is taxable today and it will remain taxable after April 1st. What is changing is the regime of taxation. So it is taxable even before April the 1st, but not at 30%. It is taxable based on the classification of that income, either as business income or as capital gain. It fits into different chapters of the Income Tax Act and with appropriate rates. That is a bit confusing because it creates a lot of uncertainty, potential for disputes. 
So all that is being changed and clarity in taxation is coming in from April the 1st. But it is taxable even today. Let me be very clear. So if anybody thinks that because nothing which is, uh, nothing is exempt from taxation because it's unregulated. So if you speculate on horse races, it is taxable. We don't have a horse race regulatory authority of India, but <laughs> it is still taxable. So everything is taxable unless it is exempted and only agriculture is completely exempted. So it is taxable and it is not necessary that something should be regulated. And uh, there are many spaces. There is a space of legal regulated. There is a space of legal unregulated. And then there is a space of illegal. So crypto is not in the illegal space. It is not yet in the legal and regulated space. It is in the space of legal and unregulated. But legal and unregulated is taxable. Even illegal is taxable. So if an IAS officer takes a bribe, that is taxable. Absolutely. It's illegal. Absolutely. But crypto is not illegal. Crypto is legal, unregulated, taxable. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.